So for vectors in Rn, you're familiar with the dot product. So the dot product is just what you get when you take the kth coordinate of u and you multiply it against the kth coordinate of v, and then you sum them all up, right? Okay, so <clears throat> the, the reason why we're interested in it is that the dot product allows for geometry. So, so far, except for some side discussions about uh, linear transformations, um, most of our linear algebra discussion has just been in terms of the algebraic properties of vectors. So for what I mean by dot product allows geometry is that we can talk about how big a vector is, what the size of a vector is. And it turns out that we can define this as being the square root of the dot product of a vector with itself. So in terms of coordinates, this would look like uk squared, uh, sum from 1 up to n, and then taking the square root. And so that gives us a notion of size. What is the size of a vector? Um, once you have a notion of size, then you can talk about distance. What is the distance between two vectors? Well, we can define it as the magnitude or norm of the difference. So that's the size of the different, the size of the difference is the distance between. So that gives us a notion of distance. Um, and then we can also use, uh, let's see, the fact that the dot product of these things is the magnitude of one times the magnitude of the other times the cosine of the angle in between them. And from that, you could actually uh, see what the angle is for a pair of vectors, or the angle between a pair of vectors. It's going to be the uh, arc cosine of u dot v over magnitude u times magnitude v. Right? Just solve that last equation for cosine. And so that gives us a notion of angle. Now, it turns out, actually, that for what we're going to do, uh, this will be less than useless, so you can forget about that one. It won't really come up. Um, this one is still good. We'll, we'll use that one. Um, what else do we have? So the dot product allows for decomposition. So we can break a vector down into its component bitses. And we can do that in, in a nice and methodical way. And so what I'm talking about here is the fact that we can use dot product to define the projection. So the projection of w onto v is going to be v dot w v dot v times v. Okay. And so, oh, and I forgot to mention one other thing. And, and that is that the, the dot product is sometimes called the scalar product. And the reason for that is that this thing right here, you can see this is this is definitely a scalar value. And the reason why I remembered it just now to bring that up is that this quantity right here in parentheses is a, a scalar, right? So this is the scalar uh, multiple of v. And so that tells you that this resulting vector is um, in the span of v. So in other words, it's parallel or anti-parallel to to v. It's a scalar multiple of it. Um, and now once we can project uh, w onto one vector v, then we can project it onto a bunch of vectors. So what I mean is that we can break w down, and here's the decomposition. So you, suppose you know that vk is a basis. Well then you know that there's going to be some ak's, some coefficients, such that you can represent w as a linear combination of those vk's, right? How do you find the AKs? Well, go out and do a load of computations. Good luck to you, right? But if those VKs form a nice basis, called an orthonormal basis, which we'll talk about soon, then we can figure this out just as the projection onto the VKs of W. And so then all of a sudden, there is a formula for the AKs. And that makes everything 
very nice and friendly and simple and allows us to do stuff even in infinite dimensional spaces that otherwise would never be possible otherwise. Um, so what else? So dot products also give us um, a, a measure of dependence. And, and so this is not so much a, a geometric way of thinking about things, but well, sort of it is, sort of it is. Um, but you can also think of it in a probabilistic sense. So let's see, so if we have, say, two uh, unit vectors, so these are both vectors of length one. Um, so let's see, let's, let's fix one of them, okay? So I'm gonna do, um, I'll take U to be going this way. Whoops, that was a pretty crappy U. Okay, so here's U, U. And then we will look at like what happens with different values of V, right? So suppose we have like, we could have V over here. Then in this case, the, the projection is gonna be about that long. We could have V over here in which case the projection is much shorter. And you should think of that projection as being kind of what V has in common with U. And so you can see that if we are orthogonal like this, then for this one right here, V is orthogonal to U. This, this is like um, maximal independence. Right, so for all these Vs that, that I've drawn, all of them are linearly independent, right? So um, with, with U, or rather the set UV is independent uh, for, for all of those. But V does have something in common with U for um, some of those choices. But if I take this one that goes orthogonal to U, then it's, there's, there's nothing in common with U. So you can think of it as being maximally independent. Um, and then you can also see from that that U and V are dependent precisely when um, their dot product is equal to one. And so the, the general idea is that these concepts are useful more generally. Um, <clears throat> so for some other vector space that might not be Rn, we can use the inner product. So this is a widget that um, behaves basically the same kind of way. We denote it like this, angle bracket uv um, and we'll see that um, there are different versions of the dot product in Rn. We'll call those inner products. And then there's also other things like maybe a vector space of polynomials or vector space of continuous functions where we can define inner products in, in a similar but different way. Um, so for example, one place you might have seen this before is in statistics. Like I said, when I was talking about probability, um, there's those kinds of interpretations. And in statistics, covariance, or its modified version, the correlation coefficient. Uh, this is an example of an inner product. Anyway, so we'll see a bunch more examples um, throughout the rest of the section.